<clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, teachers. How you doing? Hi. So let me tell everyone that we're online already. Good. So it's supposed to be 14, but I only see four, five. Let's give two minutes, four minutes for everybody to log in. So oh, I see Jimena, I see, hello Jimena, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Nice to see you. Long time no see. Long time no see you, like five years or more years. I know, callate los ojos. <laughs> but I you don't change, you. you're the same. I'm, I'm getting younger every year. <laughs> That's the difference. I'm not. <laughs> so, but yes. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. You're. Um, let me um, give a couple of minutes so everybody can log in. So, you prefer. Um, this is not for the class. This is just general survey. I was talking to some people. Do you prefer online classes or classroom classes, you know, face-to-face -face classes? What do you think? What do you like the most? No classes. Could be, could be one, one and one. Could be like like face to face. One one class face to face, and the other class uh, online. I know. I don't mean no. Yes, that's uh, that that that's what we agree on. Uh -huh. No, this is was just, just a question that I was talking in the morning to other teachers ah, okay. from the state of Mexico, and they said that they some of them rather you know have online classes and uh, the others said that is it was better to as a teacher it, as a teacher yes no i prefer face to face face to face yes because we work with very young people <laughs> that's okay. little kids and it's very difficult online to work with them they run they eat all the time they, they it's very different online Right, 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 right. Well, the problem is in the state of the Mexico, some of the schools they're not accepting, or they're they're uh, they're moving the 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 you know the calendar face, face classes. Yes, uh -huh. they're moving back to online. So that was the reason. Two two more weeks, no? Yes. Yeah, two more weeks online. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to till further notice, no. Mm -hmm. to see if uh, how does it work okay so um so uh, your name is uh, elke, or how, do you elke. Pronounce, how, do you, how do you pronounce it elke elke okay miss elke miss jimena and the rest uh, april i know who she is ale paloma almen anna and isabel we have two isabels that's cool if uh, if it's possible to new camera zone so we can um so we can see each other all right 
So um, I'm, I'm going to start by um, by introducing myself and introducing the the the, uh, the purpose of the class or you know the, the training. Uh, my name is Gerson Cisneros. Um, I'm the um, principal and teacher. Hello, April. Long time no see. Sheesh. That's pretty cool. Um, I think that's only you and, and uh, Jimena from the last course, right? Like five years ago, I believe. I think Ari is coming too. Who? Ari? Oh, okay, yes, of course, of course. Oh, Lore, nice. do you remember Lore? Lore is coming too. Lore, oh yeah, Lore, of course. Okay, but the majority, they're new. Okay, that's good. All right, new faces at Colegio del Bosque, right? This is my, actually my fourth, I believe, my fourth uh, course, I think so. I think Jimena is the only one that has been like the, all of them. <laughs> yes. So, but that's like, the first one was like 10 years ago, maybe more. Yes, so, yes I, I got in Colegio del Bosque 10 years ago, that was the first. So 10 years ago, Ten shut years ago. up. No, I was beautiful, thin, and young. Okay, so long time ago. <laughs> it was Tere, the coordinator, right? I think. I Tere, believe. and then Mariana. And then Mariana, mm -hmm. yes. Cool. Ah, okay, so let me, I'm, I'm introducing myself. My name is uh, Gerson Cisneros. I'm the principal of the school called the Ferro. Uh, we are Mm, we have uh, been around for about, I don't know, 15, 16 years. And um, we do a training for, we have classes in, uh, in, our, in our facilities. Well, and, you know, we're getting back in our facilities, but um, we do training, English training in uh, different languages. And also we are TOEFL Center, SENI representatives, and um, Cambridge um, preparation centers, and TKT, um, I call it TKT administrators. Um, so that's me, where the, the purpose of the, the negotiation with the school was to have a, um, a, a SENI, to have SENI for you guys, with the correct band, which is uh, 13, to that's what uh, SEF requires in order to continue working, right? So far so good? So um, the, the idea was to, the original idea was to do only the exam and was to uh, uh, comply with some, um, hold on a second, let me answer the question, uh, the phone. Okay, okay, sorry about that. So, um, and the original idea, I was telling you that the original idea was to have um, the SENI, you do the exam, and then we, uh, we do the, the paperwork, so you to have the SENI, right? That's the original idea. So, but then we uh, discussed and we said, why don't we give you some uh, um, training as far as, um, grammar and as far as teaching techniques. So we decided that in this 20, 20 hours uh, training, it was going to be some selected topics according to the needs of your, not your personal needs, but it's the institution needs. And at the end you will have your SENI. Okay, so far so good. So please feel open to have, um, um, any communication with me 
Um, you can, uh, if you have any question, please let me know. And um, well, that's, that's it, okay. So I'm going to start before having the names and then the, you know, introducing ourselves and blah, blah, blah. Is there any question before starting the course or, you know, the training? No? Okay. If there is a question, please feel free to, feel free to interrupt me and ask me questions, okay? If, uh, or if, during the week you have any question, we have a chat in the WhatsApp, you can send me, uh, you can ask the question or you can send me a private message, if you will, to answer and clarify any questions. Okay, cool. All righty, so Elke, tell me who, uh, you know, very, you know, very briefly, uh, where you're from, um, your years of experience, you know, um, how long have you been working as a teacher? I don't know, you know, something, a bio data very, you know, condense about you. Okay, my name is Elke. I've been working as a English kindergarten teacher like 30 years. Even my kids were were kids, now they are teenagers. And um, I love this this profession. I I really enjoy working with kids. And it's even more, more enjoyable this experience in English because they are very easily to, to understand all the things and they are very, very interesting, interested in, in this uh, language. And they really enjoy the, the, the classes and they give us all this uh, Beauty of 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 life. So you I do love kindergarten. You, you, yes, kindergarten. Kinder two and nursery. Oh my Lord in heaven! My condolences. <laughs> <laughs> two 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 groups of nursery and and this year Kinder two. Sheesh. <laughs> so I have three groups. Okay, cool. Thank you, Elke. So it's a, this is your first uh, teaching um, job, per se. Here? I mean, at, in, in your in personal this, teaching career, is this, this is the first time you work as a teacher? No, I have a, a, a more, more years of experience. I Here, I've been working since uh, 2000, 2019, yes, two years, just two years. But I've been working in another schools okay. many years, like thirty years. Okay, so you 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 thirteen uh, thirteen quiet. sorry thirteen years oh right. like a baby, you know? yes yes sorry okay cool all righty let's see now Isabel yes we have Isabel tell us about yourself Isabel hi I'm Isabel um. I just got graduated from college, uh, and this is my first work as a teacher. Um, I teach third graders. Jeez, um, my condolences too. <laughs> thank you. And yes, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> okay, so why why do you decided to 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 start to work as a teacher? I mean, first of all, what do you study? You said that you just graduated from, from college. What is your career? What is your bachelor's? I studied uh, modern languages and culture and management. And um, I decided to become a teacher because I was, I mean, I, I never thought I would be a teacher, but I started looking for jobs and I, I've always wanted to to learn like how to be a teacher, how to treat um, kids, um, and le how to learn kids uh, another language. Right. So, so yeah, I found this job, and I've been so happy ever since. Nice, very good. 
that, that that's that's actually many English teachers' story. Okay, um, uh, that uh, study to be an astronaut and then at the end of the day they become uh, you know English teachers. So it's it's quite normal. Okay, Jimena, same question. I mean, I know you, but uh, I like to but hear they from don't. You. They exactly. don't. <laughs> well, my name is Jimena. Uh, most of you, um, uh, we just think like for a second every time we have, we don't have like time to, to get to know each other. This year has been like in the past year, it's been like crazy. We don't have time for anything. Um, and Herson, you're right. They don't know me and I don't know them. Um, I just find out that they're real names <laughs> because I just saw some of them, but I didn't know how, how were they called. They, they, they were Miss. What? They were Miss. Hello, they Miss. miss uh -huh, or teacher, just teacher. teacher. Uh-huh, that's it. And I didn't know their names. But now, nice to meet you, all of you. And I'm Jimena. I've been teaching um, in Colegio del Bosque since in 2020. No, 2012. No, 11. 2011, that's my, that was my first year. And, well, it'll get worse with me. Uh, that's practically the only one that I talk to every time or more than all of them and I have this year I just have a second graders and now I'm back on first grade k1 and I love them I love them I, I was like in second grade for five years or four years and uh, I'm so happy to be back with the first graders because they are great I miss them a lot didn't know that I miss them a lot <laughs> That's good. That, that's, that's excellent. You're, see, I couldn't, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a certified teacher for children, uh, but I, I, you know, I admire you guys, really. So, um, April, yes, I know you too. And uh, your, our history is, is not that long as Jimena's, but, uh, but uh, you know, why don't you tell us about yourself? Well, <laughs> I'm April, you already know me. Well, you, you're Erson, and I think most of them. I used to work in another school with AK, and with the other ones, they are all in my, in my section, kind of. <laughs> um, have, I have been teaching for six years with teens and adults. Now I have been teaching first graders for the second year this time. It's not about me, my best friend, but <laughs> I like it. And I don't know, well, I like to teach you English. Very good. Excellent. Thank you very much. All righty. The rest, Ana Isabel, Ale, Ale Alvarez, Natalia, Paloma, Almen. If you could have your computer, your computer, your um, camera on, uh, it would be highly appreciated. Okay. Um, so let's uh, listen to Ana Isabel. See what? Yes, sure. I'm sorry for the noise behind. Um, this is my third. Well, hey, my name is Ana Isabel. I've been English teacher for three years now. First, I was in second grade. Now I'm teaching for with April and um, what else? Um, um, that's, 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 that's okay. That's very good. Thank you, Isabel. Um, we have Paloma. Paloma. Yes. Hello, Paloma. Tell me, uh, how long have you been an English teacher? Hello. Hi, my name is Paloma. Uh, this is my first time teaching. Honestly, I study psychology. So it's, it's not too far from me, but uh, I've always kept myself away from kids. Not because I don't like them, just because I, I think it's very complex. And I think, I don't know, I believe a lot in things happening for a reason. So I think this time I was, uh, I don't know, it just came to, happened that um Colegio del Bosque talked to me and I'm I've been teaching what for about four months now uh sixth grade 
and I'm actually really happy with them. I think I'm getting attached to them already, so I'm excited. So it's like, I'm sorry for the, for the example, it's like if you have arachnophobia, right? And then <laughs> yeah. uh, you will have spiders all over your house on the next day, so yes. same thing, right? Okay, yeah, Natalia. Like that. <laughs> Natalia, you here? Manifest. Hi, I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> oh, you're in a class now? Yes, I'm teaching right now. Oh, okay. I'm so, sorry. Okay, that's okay. So, where is Nat? Um, how about Almen? Almen, is that correct? Yes. Hi. I'm Almendra. So Almendra, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you can tell me Almen. It's okay. All right, thank you. So tell me about yourself. Yeah, I'm from Querétaro. I'm a psychologist too, as Paloma. And I've been teaching um, English for, I think, eight years. And I got married um, a year ago. So uh -huh. my husband is working here, so I have to come. And I began in Colegio del Bosque on August. Okay, so you moved from Querétaro because of your husband? Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. And this is your first time teaching? Or, or, uh... No, no. I've been working eight years. As eight a years as a teacher? Yeah, in Querétaro. First... Okay, cool. Yeah, my first Friday. time. Yeah. Thank you. I got it. Um, I... Ale Alvarez? Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm Ale Alvarez. <laughs> And I've been teaching English for two and a half years. And well, I'm teacher of third graders and I don't know, I just got the opportunity and I said, just why not? And here I am. <laughs> yeah, that, that again, that's English teachers, yeah. many English teachers story. Yeah, as Paloma and as, um, as an Omen, I'm a psychologist too, so. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's How long is it? Uh, two, uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years, okay, good. Yeah. And Ale MS? Like Demanda MS? No. <laughs> it's Murillo, but it's my, my two last names, Murillo San Diego. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I have a pleasure to meet you before, but is um, not not in this situation. So I I cover some of your classes in in like uh, a few months ago. Yes, okay. yes, I know. Same <laughs> as uh, same as, as April and uh, and Jimena, you you're yes. uh, one of the four or five former students of mine. And so the only problem is I got pregnant. And I couldn't finish last time, so that's why I couldn't obtain, uh, or I couldn't obtain my my degree in last time. And actually, that's the same reason that I always like, or I turn off sometimes the camera because my my little daughter starts playing or ah. moving things, or <laughs> or I have to take it to the bathroom. So sorry. No, that's um, okay. So. So I'm Ale. Um, I've been teaching in Colegio del Bosque for eight years already, um, but I have been a teacher or an English teacher for more than 12 or 13 years. Um, and like you just said, it's, it's a very strange story because I'm a nurse. <laughs> okay, yes. And first I started nurse or to become a nurse and then um, I have a, my second heart attack and the cardiologist asked me to find an easier and, and like a relaxing job. And, and you got pregnant. <laughs> no, <laughs> the only thing is I, I became a teacher and I didn't know that it was going to be more difficult and uh, more stressful, <laughs> but it's really nice, and I love it. I really, really enjoy being a teacher. Um, what else? Then I uh, last year I get my degree in 
that uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Pedagogy. <laughs> okay. Uh, and mm, I don't know. I love being te- I love being teachers with all all kids or or at least in middle school or high school or even more. <laughs> it's really really challenging for or like explaining for little kids. Jimena is actually Jimena is my daughter's teacher. <laughs> So I love you. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's all. That's good. That's good. Excellent. Well, congratulations, first of all, about the baby. And this is your year. Very good. Perfect. Okay. So as as we said, uh, this is um, this is good for all of us because we're good. we can uh, exchange some of our experiences and change some of our our. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the stories that uh, we have had in the past with uh, with our teaching career, right? We have very well experienced teachers, and we have not so experienced teachers or new teachers. That uh, if we combine all of our experiences, then it would be a very cool experience in this twenty-hour course. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, let's. Uh, Let's uh, get into the, the topic. So I'm going to be sending you after the class uh, the topics in the, in the, um, this is going to be five weeks. So it's 20, oh no, excuse me, 10, 10 sessions. Mm-hmm. And um, the, if you can't be in the class, uh, the, the session is going to be recorded. It's actually being broadcasted through YouTube in a private mode. Nobody can see it. So when we finish the class, I will give you and send you the link so you can actually, um, uh, if you have any question, watch it again, or if you couldn't make it, well then um, watch the, the, you know, the, the, the recorded class, okay? I'm gonna have to tell because of, uh, you know, it's mandatory from Mariana. I have to tell Mariana who came in and who didn't. So, but that's you with her. See what I mean? You will have to talk to her. All right. Okay, so Aria, welcome. Alan, Alan, it's not your name, right? That might be your son or something, Alan? It's Lore. Oh, because I don't see the, the, because of the, the face masks. Is, is that you, Lore? No, I am Loren. I am here. I'm so sorry. I don't That's have a... internet at home, so I came running to my son's house, but I'm here. I am Thank Lorena. You Thank you very much, Lorena, for being in the course again. Thank you. <laughs> with me. And Hello. We have Aria, right? Hello. Good afternoon. I am so sorry. That's I okay. Am... You okay? Yes, I went for my girl uh, to the to the guarderia. <laughs> no sé cómo, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, Good. so I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hello. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry. That's okay. All right. So uh, let me share my screen. Yes. Can you see my screen? Not if you see it. Okay. Cool. So the first um, the first topic that we're going to talk about is how to prepare for our classes. Okay, and this was a to- this this uh, topic was selected not because you don't prepare your classes because I know you're again well experienced teachers and I know the institution. Um, let's put it this way kindly invite you to plan your classes and uh, turn your your plans, yes or no? Okay, so uh, I know you do, but um, it's good to know some of the uh, tendencies per se, or some of the key points as far as planning our classes. And this is a special, um, especially, how do you call it? Uh, important per se, or especially, um, yes, vital for us, because we tend to forget, or we tend to become overconfident. 
with our um, planning. Yes, so the two premises in this topic is number one. We need to make the difference between a syllabus and a lesson plan. Okay, a, sy a syllabus is what we call it a chronogram, lo que le llaman aquí el chronograma. So they will give you, uh, Mariana, or you know, the, the institution will give you a sheet with uh, semana uno, these topics, week two, these topics, right? Everybody can see, everybody uh, um, see, everybody has one. It's normally by, by because of, by uh, groups and, and books, right? That's not a lesson plan. Okay, that's only the list of the topics that you have in order to uh, convey it. Now you have to transform that into lesson plans, right? So a lesson plan has, in the second premise, it's your transformation per se, or your um, script or outline that you would follow based on the chronogram that you were given. All right, okay. So let's check uh, some of the key points, some of the parts of a lesson plan, and then you will um, apply that into your local circumstances. So far so good? All right. So I, I sent you the material over the WhatsApp so you can have it later on. So a little bit of introduction. These are the, the, the type of instructions that we have in our English as a second language learners or English as a foreign language, okay? Let me see. Um, okay, so we said the segregated skill instruction. Can you read this, please? Este, let's see. Elke. The mastery of single skills is the key to success, successful learning, tradition ESL programs. So uh, uh, the traditional way of teaching said that uh, a student needs to master one skill at a time. Parentheses, we have four main skills. What are those? Remember? I give you a hint, the first one, or not the first one, but one is speaking. Listening. Listening. Reading. 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 Reading what? Speaking. Speaking. Listening. Writing. And? Oh, you said it, Jimena. Reading. Thank Perfect. you. Reading. 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 Very good. Those are the four uh, skills, right? A person that masters a language, he or she masters the four skills. Yes or no? Right? So uh, you can say that you speak English if you only read English, or you can say that you, um, you know, master Spanish if you don't write Spanish. A person to master a language must master the four skills. Now, two are passive and two are active because two skills, you receive the information. And then the other two skills, you produce the information by deduction. How do we receive the information? And therefore, which skills are passive? Any idea, Isabel? Reading and uh, listening are passive. Very good. So when you read and you listen, you receive. Therefore, speaking and writing is how you produce English. That's why many people say, I know, pues es que yo uh, leo y entiendo, pero no hablo. Right? Or many people say, I know, pues es que yo. No, hombre, escucho y le entiendo todo, pero no escribo. That's normal. That's part of learning a language. That means that this person just needs to practice more. Right? So you, you would, uh, a person would actually 
practice and practice and then become must, you know, master the four skills. Okay, so per the traditional way of teaching said that if a person masters only one skill, that's enough. And actually some of the schools, I won't say names, not yours, said, um, ya sabes, tienen Tuesday, uh, este, Grammar Tuesday. And then they have uh, uh, Listening Wednesday, and then uh, Reading uh, Friday, and then uh, we respect the way of teaching, but according to the tendency, that will be very difficult for a person to learn. They might be very good at translating, very good at, uh, at listening, very good at grammar, but really bad at speaking. And that's why this is the reason many chavos go through primaria, secundaria, and university, and they still a basic one. Right? So what is the tendency of teaching? Look at the second um, chart, the integrated skill instruction. Can you read that? Mm, Almendra, please. Integrated skills instruction exposes students to authentic language, focusing on the integration of the four basic skills. English become a real means of interaction among people rather than just an object of academic interest. Ah, now, we, now we're talking, right? Now we're talking that students will feel, listen to me, motivated, will be interested, in English. So then look at the last sentence or the last phrase. It's, it's a real tool to communicate instead of just academic interest. In other words, ¿por qué vienes inglés? Pues para pasar la materia. That will be only the academic interest, right? But if we integrate the four skills in every class, our classes become interesting to students. Sale? Um, we have two types. Um, on the left, we have content-based instruction. Can you read that? Ana Isabel, please. Content-based instruction, Communica communicative approach through academic subjects. I'm sorry, I'm in my little tiny iPad. Um, focus on the content rather than the form. Very good. Very good. This, is, this is called CLIL. Content-based learning something something for learners of English. CLIL, Google it. They will be like, 1.5 billion different pages, uh, select one or two and read it. I don't think this is your case, teachers. What does it mean? There, this, uh, this applied to the so-called bilingual schools, which I know Colegio del Bosque is, but in different, in different, um, different levels. For example, they teach history and English. No English classes. It's, uh, math in English, chemistry in English, right? Do you have that? Are you currently teaching that? No, right? I think it's prepa only or secondary. I don't know. I, 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 I have no idea. But anyways, that's clear. That's a whole different story, teachers. You need to be involved in the content. So if you want to teach, for example, chemistry, you need to be a biologist per se or or a chemical or an engineer or whatever, and then speak English. So then if you have an essay as a, as a homework, you will ask your students to write about the composition of the minerals or blah, 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 blah. And you don't care much for the English. You will care more for the actual information in the essay, correct? That's, that's, that's obvious. 
where English classes, can you read the second, I mean, the next one, este, Ale, Álvarez, please. Uh, Task-based instruction. Communicative and controlled tasks focused on the meaning of language rather than the content being used. Very good. So in this case, it's English by levels. And you care about they speak English. And even you can have, uh, you know, it's not your case because you do, uh, you know, first graders and kindergartens, but uh, you will have an essay of English about the composition of the minerals, but you don't care about if the, the information is correct or incorrect, or if it's accurate. You will care about if they use the verbs in past correctly, if they use the adjective order correctly, if they use the conjugation of verbs correctly, and so forth. See the difference? Right? So clear is a whole different story. Now we'll focus on the task-based instruction because that's our, our, um, our, you know, our, our job per se. So first again, all right. So what are the steps to integrate the skills? Number one, Aria. Yes, yes steps to integrate the language skills. Learn more, no, more about the various ways to integrate language skills in the classroom. That is a must. It doesn't matter if you have been around for years and you're the super teacher years on or whatever, but you always find ways to update yourself. And I'll explain why in a moment. Number two point, Jimena. Evaluate your students' current approach to the language skills. Always and every plan and every lesson plan, you need to have some sort of evaluation. Parenthesis, and we discussed that we, in previous courses, an evaluation is not necessary an exam. An evaluation is for you, right? It's for you to see if your students got the point or not especially with children, with little children. If you ask the question, guys, do you have any questions? No. Guys, do you understand? Yes. And then and, and the exam, everybody fails, <laughs> right? That's normal. So you need to have some sort of form of evaluation where you can actually know if your students got that point of that specific day or not. Next point, Isabel. Sorry, choose instruct, uh, instructional materials, textbooks and technologies that promote this integration. Very good. As much as you can, right? If you work for an institution where you are comply, excuse me, you are obliged to comply with the program. But even though, continue reading, remember April? Remember even if a course is labeled according to just one skill, it is possible to be create, creative and assign tasks for other skills. Exactly. Even though you are um, obliged to do a course, you need to have or be creative enough per se to integrate and combine the skills in your class, okay? Um, and this is very important for you teachers. And you will be using, for my standpoint teachers, the most important quality in a teacher, judgment. Teachers own the classroom, yes or no? Yes. Teachers have the most precious quality a human, human um, being uh, could have, the judgment of deciding according to local circumstances. Keep that in mind always. That's why it was created the infamous or famous 
libertad de cátedra. Have you heard that expression? Freedom of teaching? That means that you own the classroom, okay? So even if uh, you work for an institution that says, okay, Friday reading, uh, or reading Friday, whatever they, they, they call it. Okay, so your predominant class or your predominant skill will be reading, but still you will manage to have some listening activities, some speaking activities, and some writing activities. You agree with me? Not if you agree? Cool, thank you, Elke. The rest don't agree with me. Not, not if you, uh, if it's, uh, thank you very much. And finally, the last point, thank you, Alan Isabel. Finally, the last point, Ale Banda MS. Okay. Teach language learning strategies and emphasize their importance. And this is very important. Listen to me, teachers. Your goal, one of your goals is to have autonomous teachers. Do you understand that? Autonomous, uh, excuse me, autonomous students. Thank you, Jimena. <laughs> I, was like, I say something wrong because Jimena is very expressed. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I know I'm almost perfect and extremely sexy, but I made mistakes. <laughs> okay, so your one of your goals is to have autonomous students. Do you understand that? When, when a teacher, when a student tells you, I miss es que fui a Disney en, en, la, en vacaciones y, y ya pude pedir coffee and donuts. And then I said, Mister, how much the tick? That is a autonomous student. So that's one of your goals. And that's only made or only done by combining the skills and therefore, listen, making your class interesting to students. When a student is interested in what you're saying, what happens, Natalia? Oh, excuse me, you're working. If, you, if a student is interested in what you're saying, what happens, Isabel? I'm here though, I'm working, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm listening. Can you answer? Okay, can you repeat it? I didn't hear that. No, no, I'm, I'm asking you, I'm, I'm asking you, can you answer? Can you participate? Yes, yes, yeah, sure, I can. Oh, okay, all right. I thought you were like in front of a group and like, oh, I don't want to. Okay, all right, Natalia. Anyways, <laughs> Natalia, tell me when a student. <laughs> Sorry? Can you listen to me? It frees. It frees. I'm sorry. I'm here. Okay, okay. No, no, no worries. Um, if a student is interested in your class and your class, what happens? Uh, in which way? What happened with what? Yeah, what would be what would be the result of that student? Will oh. he speak English? What? Will he speak English? Will he learn English? Yeah, sure. It's always better when the kids are interested, not just the kids. I mean, like every student is better when it, they are interested and enjoying the class. Very good, excellent. I have my student here. Right here. Hola, <laughs> very good. <laughs> excellent. So bottom line, we need to have the skills in every class, okay? Very good. What time is it? Yes. So what are the elements of a lesson plan? Number one and the first one, Almendra, a main topic, just only one main ESL topic, preposition of place, model verbs, etc., regardless of the time assigned for the session. This is this is the first one and very important. And, and maybe Almendra said the oh, teacher, obviously. There are some books or some programs that, it, that, it, that forces you to do present continuous, affirmative, negative, and question in one hour. That's impossible. So choose one main topic and stick to it. Second point, once you have your main topic chosen, 
you will have what, Ale Alvarez? Ale? Uh, do I read the objective? So I'm um, kind of lost. Yeah, objective. That's the second one. The objective. Yeah, okay, okay, thanks. The objective, uh, so, since a lesson plan cannot cover every aspect of an ESL topic, you should limit the scope of the session through the writing of two to five specific objectives. Very good. So once you have present continuous uh, affirmative, okay? So you will have four or five main, uh, small objectives. For example, number one, the students practice the verbs. The students master um, the singular and plural of present continuous. Students speak about vacations and so forth. Once you have your objective in mind, you will have the study part. Lorena, can you read the, what it says study, please? Yes, study. The study part can be the steps the teacher carries out to teach the lesson. It could be the grammar section or even a short presentation by the teacher. Thank you. The well, study part, in other words, is whatever you want your students to learn. I want my students to master present continuous. So what can I do to or for that. I want my students, I don't know, in kindergarten, I want my students to master farm animals or um, I, I don't know, it's the colors and uh, chores. So whatever you're, you want your students to learn, that's in the part of the study. Uh, study, study, eh? Anda, pues de Mexican, to study, the study part. And then, the student activities, once you have the idea of what you want your students to learn, how you're going to transmit that. Read the part of the student activities in April. Most of the time should be the public to this section. It is a series of exercises where the students practice the topic of the study of the study part. Example, clothes, exercises, games, writing, etc. Very good. So in this part, you would do the activities. Normally, teachers, um, we have the infamous teacher's book. Who uses the teacher's book? By show of hands. One, two. And two, very you good. Have to. You have to. <laughs> I love your answer. Uh, and Jimena answers us like that because she knows what I'm going to say next. The student's book, if you follow the student's book by the by like a recipe, what happens, April? Just the student's book or just the teacher's book? The teacher's book. Did I say student's book? I'm sorry. The teacher, if you follow the teacher's book like a recipe, you know that the teacher's book, you open it, and on the right, you have the student's book part, and then yeah, on yeah. the left, you have like a lesson plan, no? I think it's going to be so systematic because it's not going to be planned for the students that you're going to be teaching for. I mean, like the interest, maybe the, the, the age, um, the context, everything that involves them to attract them and get them to learn what you want and the topic so they got interested. Very good. So if you only stick to the student's book or a teacher's book, ah, it might be not so interesting after all. So that's why you need to develop your own activities per se. According to what April said, and she said it correctly, the type of students, the type of um, of uh, class, the level of the students, because sometimes, and this is, uh, this is I know Colegio del Bosque is not the, 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 um, the case, but I, I've seen, I consulted 
other institutions here in other cities. And they have, because of they want to be top notch, very cool books. And the students, unfortunately, don't have the level. That's a problem. So you need to adapt according to your local circumstances. Do you agree with that? Cool. All right. And then finally, the evaluation. Can you read that, Isabel? Sure. Evaluation. The drills performed in this step depends on depend on many class factors, format, length, topic, number of students. But it could be a written quiz or even a communi communicative com <laughs> activity. Very good, communicative activity. So the evaluation, again, it depends on the class, it depends on the group, but it has to be in every class so you can know if a student got the point or not. It says here, the number of students. Do you think the number of students influences your lesson plan? Influences your activities? Why do you say yes, Elke? Can you, can you elaborate? Because, yes, because if you have, um, so a very big group is difficult to, to take the attention. And when some of them are absent, you can work and have a review and take care about the students that, that you know that they need help. Very good. Uh, I'll give you an example. I, I gave this, uh, this course, this is a part of our teacher's training course. I gave the teacher's training course to, uh, to our dear friends from the public sector in uh, Leon. And they had students of uh, groups of 55, 60. So yes, it does influence your activities in the classroom. Do you think the time of the class influences in the, in the activities that you are and you have in the lesson plan? Why do you say yes, Natalia? Because <laughs> they're kids, you know, they get bored really fast and they need to be like distracted. I like to play some games and activities that, I don't know, just put an alert, you know? Right. It is way different to have a class at seven in the morning yeah. And to have it right before recess. Yeah, sure. Even worse, right after recess. Yes. All the smelly, popped out in sugar. <laughs> what yes. about the last class, the last hour? It's, a, it's even they're, worse. <laughs> they don't even pay attention to you anymore, right? So, yes. They just want to leave, yes. Exactly. So, all of those, thank you, Natalia, all of those factors influence no they are tired the lesson plan yeah they're tired very good okay so let's go now into the practical way or how on how to prepare a lesson plan let me uh, open a, another uh, file yes to make it bigger um it's um it's five o'clock. You wanna take a pee pee break, or you're cool. So we continue. Okay, cool. All right. So let me open the other file. Let me send it to my email. Um, I just send it to you. Hold on. Give me one minute. By the way, any news from the ones that missed the class? No, verdad, nada. Okay. There we go. Um, All 
I don't like Mac. <laughs> okay. Can you see my screen? Not if you see it? Cool. Thank you. No, this is the same one. Ah, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Now, now we're talking. Right. Yes, can you see my screen? Thank you very much. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so this is more um, the same thing, but bigger. Okay, so this is these are the stages. We're going to call it the stages of a lesson plan. Now, before moving in, we need to explain that a lesson plan should be of 60 minutes or you know 55 minutes it depends if they have a reset between classes now this means that if you have like I, I know you do you have two or three hours with the same group how many lesson plans you will have Jimena One per hour. So if you have three hours, that, that might be three planning. Thank you very much, Jimena. And this is something that we need to work on it every day. And I know it's uh, the cocoa for the teachers because uh, again, I, like we said at the beginning, you become overconfident, right? And it's like, uh, mañana me toca present continuous con tercer grado. Yo me almuerzo present continuous. And then you do a you do a, a short outline with the ideas that you're going to do. And then your lesson plan for three hours is this big. Do you think that would be a lesson plan? No, that's just, I don't even know what it is. But a lesson plan, with all the elements that we just discussed, it's in hour per hour. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it has a reason for that. What would happen if you have the same tone and the same activity, or you have no activities for one hour or two hours? What happens to your class? Would it be appealing? Would it be boring? Isabel? It will be super boring. Super boring, I love it. Super boring. And then you will have a whole different set of problems because then in discipline comes into play because then because some students are bored then they will go like, Miss, ¿qué crees que mi perro se comió in the middle of the class? And they start breaking into Spanish, playing, and blah, blah, blah. So your class is officially ruined. But if you have your class in one hour with the stages, uh, starting with a low challenge activity, and then a medium challenge activity, and then a high challenge activity, and then go back. If your class is like this, with this pace, what happens to your students? And Isabel? They just got lost, bored, and not interested at you anymore. That is if you that have is if you have play. Play. Oh. But if you but have, you have if places, places you have a you have a yes. If you have different pace, what happens, Ale by Alvarez? Is he, would be, is he uh, more interested in class, maybe? Yes, yeah, they will. So. At least 
the Elise will remain awake, <laughs> right? So yes, let's discuss that. And uh, we have four stages. We have warm up. We have vocabulary presentation, the main presentation, and the last one, the follow up or the consolidation. And different groups, different names like the wrap up, the preparation, blah blah. But this is the same thing. The introduction present new vocabulary, main presentation, and the uh, consolidation, okay? So let's talk about the first one, a warm up. Uh-huh. It's, why is it important? Who goes to the gym? Who, who works out? See, believe it or not, I do. You know, Me too, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, really uh, once or twice a year, but yes, it's okay, give me that. So what do you do when you go to the gym? What do you do when you work out? First of all. I have like an objective. Uh-huh. And, and then I well, I listen to my instructor. I have uh -huh. uh, some friends that are helping me. And um, I try to to uh, stay. Oh, this is my son. Say hello, buddy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, well, I try to end up to the, the exercises that they told me to do. It's hard sometimes. But, but you walk into the gym and then you start doing all the sit ups and crunches like. Right ah, no, 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 no. I have to warm up first. Exactly. You have to do some stretches and uh, some you stretching, know, because stretching, otherwise stretching. you're going to be sore and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Same thing happens in the classroom. When you walk into a classroom or you change from one hour to another, and then you have you need to prepare your students for the class. So you need to start with a warm-up, and it's a short, short activity that will motivate your students to learn. Mm -hmm. The number one activity for a warm-up is eliciting. What is eliciting? Elicit to elicit or eliciting is asking questions for uh, an, a specific purpose or to gain interest. Like give an example. If, uh, if your topic is present continuous, um, you will ask uh, some, you will not start with present continuous. You will ask something to gain the, your interest. For example, um, tell me, Isabel, tell me what is your favorite place for vacations? You know, regardless pandemic, of course, you know. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, what is your favorite place for vacation? Mm. I don't actually know. Um, I think the beach. Maybe. Okay, so the beach. All right, tell me, uh, Ana Isabel, what is your favorite place for vacation? Mm, um, the beach. <laughs> also. All right. So, All right, so we have to What about you, Natalia? You, Natalia? I like to go hike. Hiking. All right. The mountains? Yes. All right. Mountains. So, beach, mountains. And finally, Jimena, what is your favorite place for vacation? Beach, too. The beach, too. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm eliciting information from you, right? Am I talking about present continuous? No, am I talking about grammar and welcome guys for uh, to the class? No, I'm asking in, uh, interesting questions for to gain your students interest. See my point? Okay, so this warm up letter B on the, on the left, it changes their mind from Spanish to English. Letter C, in case of verb, recycle conjugations. Letter D, Lorena. No more than eight minutes, very good. Oh, do you listen to me? 
Eh, touch screen. Yes, we listen. Oh my God. Oh. Don't worry, Lorena. Don't worry. If if you have problems like Lorena with your your um your device, you can you can type in the chat no, your answer. That's okay too. And not much vocabulary and recycled past topics. Good. So once you once we have our students' interest, then then we present the vocabulary, new vocabulary. First premise, Isabel, letter A. Shouldn't be less than five, but no more than seven. In other words, no more than seven words, no less than five. What happens if it's less than five, your brain says that it's not important enough, so they will forget. If it's more than seven, your brain will say it's too much. For an hour, it's too much. Yes, and Isabella. Hey, hello. So we used to have, well, in my grade, first grade, we used to have that rule that it was five words, but since the pandemic, we we started with just three. Do you think we should start increasing even though they are first graders? I, I will say yes. I mean, they, 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 there are sponges, you know? And if you, you make the class or the vocabulary interesting to them, they will actually uh, go for it. See my point? So in other words, don't limit them. I mean, they, they, they're sponges. They, they actually have more time <laughs> than us. Okay? Why don't you try it and then see what happens? Cool. And number, letter B, um, Ale Alvarez. be presented with mechanical drills, oral repetition for pronunciation, semi-mechanical game activity, and critical. When do, they, when do they use them in their lives? Very good. We are going to have, uh, this is because it's um, in a different class, but uh, we will have the, the, the drills. We'll call it the drills, D1, D, D2, D3. Um, let me get, yes. Mechanical drill, what is a drill to start with? A drill is an activity, right? An exercise. Okay, so mechanical exercise, semi-mechanical exercise, and critical thinking exercise. When it's mechanical, our students don't really think about it. When it's semi-mechanical, our students will think a little bit on the answer and critical thinking, our students will actually apply in their lives. I'll give you an example. Um, so you, you're doing a same example, present continuous, um, and then you're doing, uh, well, let, let's do the, the, the example here, the, the uh, emotions fun and adjectives, fun, good, excellent, interesting, exciting, blah, blah, blah. So you will, a uh, mechanical presentation is exciting, repeat, exciting. Great, repeat, great, and so forth. Huh? Semi-mechanical is, for example, complete the, the sentence, and then you have a happy face. Uh, Juanito Perez is sad or happy? That is semi-mechanical. It's almost obvious. Uh -huh. Critical thinking is, for example, Natalia, tell me your name about your BFF. Your best friends forever? Paloma. <laughs> Paloma, okay. So Paloma's here in the classroom? No, right? Okay, so. I think, yes, I don't know. Yes, she's here? <gasps> okay, Paloma, cover your ears. No, just kidding. Natalia, think in Paloma. Think in four adjectives or in four. Um, Emotions or um, for, uh, for uh, yes, adjectives for about Paloma, parentheses. You meant to use the vocabulary that you just learned. That's the, the point, right? 
you have your student, you had your students repeat, then you had your students to apply the words and some very obvious examples. And then you have your students now think in their own life. So Natalia, tell me the four adjectives about Paloma. Okay, um, she's very loud, <laughs> super loud, but also she's friendly and she's beautiful too and fun and I don't know, nice. <laughs> Excellent. See the point, Natalia, use the, use the, 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 the adjectives. But if, if you listen to Natalia, Natalia thought about the answer. She was like, ah, she's, uh, she's nice, uh, she's beautiful. Okay, that is critical thinking. Yeah, sure. She's using her own knowledge and applying to the new words. So far so good? Questions so far? No, understand, yes. And everybody fails. Eh? <laughs> okay, now we go to the main dish to the strongest part of a class, the main presentation. And according to the column of the left, we have grammar presentation, we have video classes, we have listening classes, reading classes. So everything that you have in mind for your class or everything that you want your students to learn is here in the main presentation. And then we're going to have uh, uh, some uh, steps to follow. Letter A, the warm up for the main presentation, Almenda. Okay, warm up. A warm up about the communicative function for the presentation. Example, if, you, if your point in present perfect, you may use hobbies and habits. When are they going to use it in life? Okay, I, I made a mistake, it's a typo over there. It says, example, if your point is present perfect, so change that. You may, so you, you're not going to use, um, you need to introduce the topic or the main presentation. I'll give you an example. Check the, check the differences. Ana Isabel, let's say Ana Isabel, don't answer, I'm just giving you an example. Ana Isabel walks into the classroom and then she says, Okay, she does the warm up, she does the vocabulary, and then she's, she writes uh, present perfect. And Voltea ID say, guys, do you know what present perfect is? Believe me or not, I've been a teacher's trainer many years now. You can ask him about it. I've been a, a coordinator many years. And I've seen teachers doing that, for real. Don't do that, teachers. Why, why you can't do that? Why you can't ask a teacher, as a guys, students, uh, to uh, let's talk about present perfect. Do you know what present perfect is? Because no teachers, they're students. Thank you, April. There are students, they don't need no choro. They don't, they're there because they're learning. So if you do that, stop doing it. The premise is this, never assume a student knows. Why? Because there are students Okay, so now let's see the other scenario. And Isabel walks into the classroom. Uh, she does the warm up. She does the uh, vocabulary presentation. And then present perfect, she says, she doesn't say present perfect. She, she asks, April, tell me a good habit of yours. Brushing my teeth three times a day. Okay. okay, brush your teeth. Very good. You brush your teeth. Very good. Now, este, uh, Isabel, tell me a bad habit of yours. Okay. 
Um, I know I'm perfect. Gosh. No, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect at all. Um, I'm just messing with you. I don't know. 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 I You smoke a cigarette? Uh, uh, 15 years old. Okay, so uh, yesterday, when I was 15 years old, I, I smoked a cigarette. See? ¿Sí? And then you continue. Y entonces para esto Isabel ya dibujó una, un timeline y puso Isabel... Ya sabes, el monito, el otro monito. 15 years old, Isabel smoked a cigarette. Isabel continues y, y dibuja una línea con la flecha. Ok, so, ya, y entonces presenta. Isabel dice, Isabel has smoked cigarettes since she was 15 years old. Y entonces ya presentó present perfect. See the difference of presentations? Which one do you think was more effective to your students? And this is a tricky question. No? Okay, let me paraphrase the question. Which one do you think motivated your students to produce English? And Isabel? The second scenario, because you invite them to think about their lives. Very good, very good. Excellent, that's, that's the answer. That's the answer. In the first scenario, they will pass the, the material, the subject, excuse me. They will pass the subject. They will ace the exam but they were not going to be interested in English. And if a student is not interested in English, what happens, Ali? Ali Banda, MS. If a student is not interested in English, what happens? They're not going to learn. Simple as that. When a student is interested, he will learn. So you do the warm up, You do the vocabulary, you present the main presentation, and then at the end, you do the follow-up or the consolidation. Again, different books, different names, the wrap-up or the closure or what he said, but it's the same thing. It's a follow-up or the consolidation of the topic. And this is where your students actually show if they got the point or not. Teachers, and this part of the class is your evaluation. Why? Because okay. you can see if they understood. You can see there if they understood the topic and the exercises. Thank you very much. Again, it doesn't need to be an exam. Like, uh, like in the column on the left, it could be a role play, it could be a game, an interview, a class presentation, whatever. It's only for them to show that they actually learn the point and they're practicing. All right, so far so good? Okie dokie, now I'm going to show you an example of a lesson plan that one of my teachers sent me, okay? Let me just open it. And tell me if you agree or not. So. Can you see my screen? 
many of you see it. Okay, so this is a very, um, very simple lesson plan, hand uh, written. So it says level, um, bueno, la, the, the first part it depends on the institution, no? the teacher, the level, um, the time, this is two hours, one hour, the first hour. General objective, vacation. The warm up, what is your favorite place for vacation and why? Eliciting material, pictures of different places, dynamics, frontal, local. in other words, you're gonna be front of the classroom. Time, five to eight minutes. Then vocabulary, uh, recycling verbs, what would you do in the, in the beach? Uh, eliciting words or repetition. Uh, second drill, complete the sentence. The third uh, drill, pen work. And uh, what, are you, what is your dream vacations? Pictures, pen work, eight to 10 minutes. Then the main presentation, the warm up is a, a poster with many people on the beach. She had a poster with uh, people on the beach doing things with, uh, with names stacked in the poster. And uh, then he will, she will elicit words from the picture. Pablo is, is, uh, Pablo is swimming, Carla is uh, drinking, et cetera, et cetera. Flashcards and uh, with the word right now. So Pablo is swimming right now. Carla is running right now in the beach, etc. Ten to 10, uh, 10 to twenty minutes. Then the consolidation work in pairs and uh, write what they're doing right now with your partner. Different situations and then the activity on page eighteen of the book. I, I don't even remember what the book was, but this is this is a lesson plan. It is not word by word. It's not a manuscript. A manuscript. It's just a guide. And this is 60 minute class. If you count the minutes, there's no more than 60 minutes. And then she had two hours. So she needed another lesson plan for the following hour and so forth. Okay. I'm gonna be sending you over the WhatsApp. Now, for homework, yes, for homework, uh, well, not for homework, for, um, yes, for homework, but we're going to get uh, in, um, uh, you know, in agreement right now. You in pairs, you're going to do for the next class on Thursday, on site, a presentation of a lesson plan of a specific class that I'm going to give you. Okay, we want to work in pairs. So let me, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Asignar, abrir. Do we work with our partners? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm asking because I think this could help in like planning the classes and for the yeah. class. Um, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm signing the, okay, let me do it again. So let's see, uh, April with? April and Isabel. Okay, no me gusta hacer esto porque ya sabes, ay, no me escogió, ya sabes, no, pero bueno. Este, Ale Álvarez en? Nobody wants to play with me, not sure. Ale, Ale Álvarez with? Oh, no, I'm with, yeah. Sorry? I'm with Isabel. No, Isabel, ah, yes, Isabel, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ale Banda MS with? Uh, if my partner is not here, it's Danny. Uh, no, the ones that are here, please. Oh, so 
I don't know if Almen has any, or do you, can, can you? you? Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yes, I'll Almen. Almen mess it with uh, Miss Almen. Almen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jimena Mesa with? Well, the only one that is from my section is Elke, what? maybe Elke, or if you want something. Elke, okay, good. Okay. And finally, Aria, Loreno, and Natalia, sorry, mm -hmm. together. Uh, and the ones que no vinieron, pues por gachos, pues ellos se les va a poner este. Who's with me? I'm sorry. I didn't get it. Natalia, you're with Lorena and Aria. Okay, so I send you um, an invitation for small groups. Please go there and then I'll discuss with you the topic. Isa, are you there? 